Hey guys and welcome back to H3D CGI. So in this tutorial series we're going to go ahead and create this cartoony house. So this tutorial series is aimed at beginners. So if you just started out with modeling in Maya and um, playing around with shaders and so on, then hopefully you guys will find this helpful. Um, if you're a bit more advanced, you probably find this uh, a bit boring. So I advise you to go ahead and skip to something um, more advanced. So first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the uh, mesh. So this is the actual house we're going to be creating. This is the wireframe of it. So you can see what bits um, we're going to go ahead and um, create. And if you notice, um, this is all subdivision modeling. So everything we can go ahead and smooth and that will go ahead and make it look a lot nicer. Okay. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and create a new scene so I can get rid of this. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn back my grid. Okay. So the first thing that you might want to do is you might want to change your background color and you can do that by uh, pressing Alt and B. Okay. So I normally, um, when I present stuff, I use the black, uh, but normally when I model, I go ahead and use this one. It depends on the mesh and uh, your personal preference. Okay. So the next thing you're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and go through um, your layout first of all. So let's go ahead and go to window or display, sorry, and then go to UI elements. And if you click this little um, tear um, sort of button, you can go ahead and tear that panel off. And what this lets you do is you can go ahead and turn stuff off like the rain slider and time slider that we don't really use um, for modeling. So you can go ahead and turn off your time slider your range slider and your helpline and you can even go ahead and turn off your command line because we're not going to be doing any scripting okay we'll need our toolbox and attribute editor and so on so we'll leave that on let's go ahead and turn this off and there's a scene also go to panel or renderer and turn back to default quality rendering and if you don't have the attribute editor on the right side you can go ahead and press Control a and that will switch in between the channel box and the layer editor and the attribute editor. Okay, so that's control A to switch in between these two windows. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to introduce you guys to uh, a little bit to subdivision modeling. I'll probably go ahead and create a separate video that will go in more depth with this. So let's just go ahead and give you guys a quick introduction. So I'm going to go ahead and create the cube um, in here. Okay, and as you can see, this is just the standard cube. And if you wanted to go ahead and smooth this, we can go ahead and press free on our keyboard. And as you can see, it will give you a preview of what this mesh would look like if you went ahead and smoothed it. And basically free is subdivision level three. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, we can go ahead and go to mesh and go to smooth and click on the little box on the side. And this will give you the smooth options, okay? So this cube at the moment is on the four faces. And we can go ahead and um, give this an extra division level by using this um, smooth option. So let's go ahead and give it a smooth division level one. Press apply. And as you can tell, now this um, smoothed our cube. So basically now it has some extra faces. If we go ahead and smooth it once more, that's um, smooth division level two. And we can also go ahead and smooth this one more time. And that will give us what the smooth mesh preview is. Okay, so basically when you go ahead and make a cube, where is it? Let's go ahead and make another one, sorry. Okay, so I'll just drag one out. Now I press free. Basically it's giving you this preview. Okay, so we can go ahead and um, let's go ahead and crack on with modeling. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and create the house base. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is create a cube again. And if your interactive select, um, creation is not turned on, you can go to create polygon primitives and you can go ahead and turn the interactive creation on or off. I normally have this turned off because it's a lot easier to go ahead and create the cube and it will go ahead and create it in the center of our grid. Okay, so we created our cube and let's go ahead into our front 
view and let's just quickly go ahead and go through how to switch in between viewports. So the first thing that you normally notice um, if I just press space that you have different viewports and hopefully you are already familiar with these. But the way I change viewports is you can go ahead and press space every time. So if I click in here and then press space, it will go into that viewport. Now I can switch in between here like this. But I find it's really slow. So what I do is I hold down space, click on the Maya icon, okay, click and drag, and then go ahead and click. Um, let go off my mouse where I want to go. So if I want to go into my front view, I just drag, drag my mouse over it and then let go, okay, and it will switch into my uh, different viewports and I find this a lot faster and I guess um, I would advise you guys to get used to that as well. So once we have our cube um, created let's go ahead and go into our front view and position this on the grid. Now if you wanted to um, make sure that this is at the right um, exactly on the grid you can go ahead and move our pivot point by um, pressing insert on our keyboard. Okay and if we select that axis and then hold down V on our keyboard as you can see the little pivot will change and if you middle mouse button to one of the um, vertices on the mesh it will go ahead and snap down to that vert okay so once we've done that we can press insert again and as you can see our pivot is moved to the bottom of the mesh and not in the center once we have that we can go ahead and snap this um, cube onto the grid by selecting that axis because I only want it to snap downwards okay and then if I hold down X on my keyboard it will go ahead and snap to the grid instead of a vertice okay so holding down X middle mouse button okay and then clicking on the grid and that will perfectly position our cube where we want it to so let's go ahead and start blocking out the um, basic shape for our house. So we're going to go ahead and do that by accessing uh, vertex mode. So let's go ahead and select all them top vertices and drag it up a little bit. Okay. Once we have that, we're going to go ahead and select all the um, back vertices and we're going to go ahead and drag them out. Okay. And hopefully you're already familiar with um, moving vertices around and so on. So I'm just using the move tool, selecting the vertices and pushing them around. Okay, so that looks like a pretty good base for our house. Let's go ahead and move this. And again, because we moved our pivot, we just um, I'm just dragging in this direction so it stays on the grid, okay? All right, so that looks like a pretty good base for our house. Now let's go ahead and see what happens if we smooth this. As you can see it will turn into a sphere and the reason for that is because what when you go ahead and smooth this what it's trying to do is it's basically going to go ahead and smooth in between these two edges if I wanted to go ahead and keep this edge really hard I could go into my edit mesh and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tear, the, tear this panel off okay and then go into our insert edge loop tool and we can go ahead and add in um, a couple of edges here so I want to add one there and add one here and you'll see in just a moment why we're doing this now when you're adding in edge loops or supporting edges like this what you want to pay attention is that you want to keep these faces in here um, roughly uh, square okay and that will give you the best smoothing results so now I'm adding one there as well okay and let's go ahead and add one on the bottom as well Okay, and let's go ahead and add one on the back as well, just to demonstrate. So now if we go ahead and smooth this and press free, as you can see, it will keep our shape um, as a cube instead of turning this into a cylinder or a, um, a sphere. And the reason for that is because now this knows that we only want to go ahead and smooth in between these two edges. Okay, so this edge and that edge, it will go ahead and smooth in between here. Now you'll also notice that we'll go ahead and push the supporting edges further in. And we can go ahead and stop that um, by splitting up these long faces. So we can go back into our insert edge loop tool 
We can go to multiple edge loops and let's set it to be two. And we can go ahead and add two in here. Okay, let's go ahead and add in four this way. Now if you notice when we go ahead and smooth this, this edge doesn't move as much as it did before. And also we should really go ahead and add in a couple of extra edge loops here as well to stop this edge from moving in too much. Okay, so this is really the basics of um, subdivision hard surface modeling. So let's go ahead and get rid of these edges quickly. And let's go ahead and um, start um, blocking out the main shape that we need. So the first thing that you always want to go ahead and do is you want to go ahead and block out the main shape first and then you would want to go ahead and add in all the supporting edges. So now I'm just going to go ahead and delete these because I only added them to demonstrate what we're doing. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this loop as well. Now what I'm doing is I'm double clicking and then shift right click to delete the edge. Okay. And that will delete the edge. If you go ahead and you have an edge here, and let's so say I go ahead and double click and press delete on the keyboard instead of uh, shift right click and delete edge. What you will notice is that the vertices um, for that edge loop stay there. So you really want to avoid this and use the um, delete edge feature in Maya. So you double click the edge loop and then shift right click delete the edge. And if you notice now the vertices are not there anymore. So I just get rid of these really quickly. Okay, and let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add the top half of the house. So let's go ahead and select this face and I'm changing uh, between the <coughs> modes by right clicking on the object. But hopefully you're already familiar with this. Let's go ahead and select that top face. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and extrude. So I'm just clicking extrude pressing W on my keyboard and we're going to go ahead and drag this up. Now if you notice when we deleted one of the edges, now it's still there. So we're going to have to go ahead and get rid of that in just a second. But while this face is still selected, what I'm going to do is press scale on my keyboard and we're going to go ahead and scale this in to give us the top half of the house. Okay, so I'm just scaling this in. Let's say something like this okay and obviously you can make your own house I'm just making one as an example so I'm just double clicking the edge and get rid of that okay so basically this is going to be our main shape for our house that we're going to go ahead and start off with okay and now that this main shape is somewhat blocked off we can go ahead and start adding in the edge loops um, so we can go ahead and smooth this so let's go ahead and do that so go into my insert edge loop tool and before I go ahead and do that, open up the option box and let's go ahead and reset the tool because I only want to add in a couple of edges. So let's go ahead and start off by adding in the edge on the bottom. Okay. And then let's go ahead and add in these edges as well. Okay, so I'm adding one on the top half as well. Now here you will notice that um, when we go ahead and add in an edge loop here, it doesn't add it at the right place there. But we can always go ahead and move that later on. Let's just go ahead and add in the main edges for now. Okay, so we also need one on the top here. So basically you want to have two supporting edges for each main edge that you have. So let's go ahead and smooth this and see how it's looking, okay? So if you notice, this is sort of the rough shape that we had for the house that I made. And the reason why this is still smoothing a lot is because we didn't add in the edge loops there. But what I did one is I wanted this smooth curve going around here. Now if you go ahead and smooth this, as you can see, it's, it's pretty smooth, but it's not quite right. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and give this some more edges that uh, Maya can go ahead and smooth. So I'm just going to add in an edge loop around here. Okay. And then press R on my keyboard to scale. And I'm going to go ahead and push this out a little bit more. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and do that one more time. So I had one there. Press R on my keyboard. Smooth it out a little bit more. I probably want to go ahead and drag this up a bit more actually. 
just to give this a nicer smooth. So now if you smooth it, if you notice this curve it looks a lot nicer. Okay. But we did want to fix this um, edge loop. Okay. So we can go ahead and add in an extra edge loop in here if you want it to, and that will give it pretty close to where we need it. Or we can just go ahead and move this edge where we need it. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go into our front view. And we're going to go ahead and select the vertices that we want to move. So I'm shift dragging those vertices. And there as well. Okay, and these guys. I can press V on my keyboard to go ahead and start moving these guys around. And now what I'm paying attention to is this top edge. Okay, once that guy is at the right place, I'm going to go ahead and shift select, deselect. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this guy is at the right place. Once it is, shift drag around it to deselect it. And then move this guy as well. Okay, so now that looks really good. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on this half. So shift select all of them. Okay. Move the top vert where I want it. Once it's there, shift deselect. Do the same thing to the one lower down. And to that one as well. So now you'll notice that when we go ahead and smooth this, this is going to look pretty good. Now we can go ahead and deselect these edges so they're not highlighted anymore. Okay. So now you'll notice that this edge is still really smooth. Now we can go ahead and move this stop edge loop a bit closer to the edge and see if that looks a little bit better. And that's still really smooth, okay? So what we can do, and the reason for that is, is because this, um, that this face is really long, so it will go ahead and push this edge in all the way in here. Now if you notice, if you add in another edge loop here, it will move um, our next edge a lot less. Okay, so the first edge will stay nearly where it's supposed to be. Okay, so that will make this edge a lot harder than it is, and I'm having some craziness going on, or it seems like I did. No, it seems like it's fine. Now what you'll also notice is here, where we added in these edge loops and we moved the vert. Now this um, is not in enough, so we can just go ahead and go into our front view. Select all of these top vertices and we can just push them in a tiny bit, okay? To carry on with that curve. Okay, so that looks really nice for our base um, for our base house. And in the next part, we're going to go ahead and start adding in um, the door, the windows, and so on. And then eventually, we'll go ahead and get to the um, roof part as well. What I did, what I do want to do though, is the same thing that we've done on this side. Okay, we want to go ahead and add in an edge loop in the center. Or roughly in the center, or we can add one two on each side. So we might want to go ahead and do that. So again, multiple edge loops two. And I just add in two there. Okay, and that will give us a lot nicer smooth. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed the first part of this modeling series. Make sure you guys leave a comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the second part.